Good evening and welcome to Bookmark. I'll make a confession. I've been feeling a, a bit lousy the last few days with an ear infection, uh, so I haven't had much time to prepare for this. And with a few other pressures crowding in, I'll keep my remarks on tonight's book review very short. The book that I am speaking about tonight is entitled Seven Days to Freedom, Joining Up Connections in Creation. It's by John Dudley Davies, who is a gentleman in his mid-90s. He is a retired um, Church of Wales um, bishop uh, who now resides in North Wales. Uh, he has asked John Bell from the Iona community to write the foreword to this, and it was John who sent me a copy of the book on recommendation. So it's quite a quirky book. Um, it's a short read. It's only 150 pages. Um, but this man has had a very extensive and varied career. Uh, just to give you a little indication, sorry, first of all, it's Seven Days to Freedom by John Dudley Davies. Um, and it's printed by DLT, Darton Longman and Todd, and it is out this year, so it's very recent. Uh, John Dudley Davies uh, grew up in Merseyside, joined the RAF as an engineer, went to theological college, became a curate and then a priest in the Church of England, went to South Africa, was involved in the struggles during the apartheid regime, made such a nuisance of himself for righteousness sake that he was deported from the country, came back and took up various roles in the Church of England and then the Church of Wales, uh, local parishes, vicar and chaplain, principal of a college, um, a bishop, um, and in his retirement is still thriving and writing and pondering. Uh, the beauty of this book is that it is written from a different or unusual angle. It's somewhere placed between local parish ministry, a bit of academia, someone who's had a very varied life. Uh, he has an introduction where he talks about a fitter's angle. And he talks about when you're a fitter working on an aircraft or if you're a plumber or electrician in a house. There are all sorts of bits of the infrastructure of a plane or of a car or of a boat or of a house. Uh, all the infrastructure, which if you strip back behind the, the kind of floorboards and, and the walls, there's an infrastructure that those who are tradespeople know all about, but most of us are fairly oblivious to. And he uses that as a nice analogy to talk about how the scriptures, and in particular the opening chapters of Genesis, Genesis 1, 2 and 3, uh, give us a kind of connectedness to all the aspects of life. And he uses that analogy throughout. Uh, it's the connections from creation uh, in Genesis 1 and 2, which people often think that stands alone. Uh, we've got this account of creation uh, that speaks about God speaking creation into existence, the six days, and then God rests. And here Davies makes the, the really telling point that the way the Bible has been divided into chapters and verses in recent centuries, one, it helps us to orientate and find our way around this large text, but it's done us a disservice in some ways because the way that Genesis 1 ends and then Genesis 2 begins seems to infer that there is a break in the text at the end of six days creation. And because Genesis 2 begins with the seventh day and God resting after creating everything, there is the implication which we now pick up on and assume that there's a cleavage between the six days and the seventh day, the Sabbath. In the original text, there isn't that cleavage or break. And, and what Davies is trying to do is to reconnect creation with all the other aspects of life and of faith. And I'll give you an indication from his chapter headings what he's talking about. This gives just a little teaser or flavour of what to expect. The chapter headings are, and there are 11, a missing connection, question, connecting at the beginning, that's Genesis, where we fit in our connections with the rest of creation, the witness of the sixth day, our connections with our ancestors, the climax, the six days connecting to the seventh, and that's the real clue. The seventh day connecting to labour, our work. The seventh day connecting to land and where we live and how we use or sometimes abuse the earth. The seventh day connecting to learning and the fact that learning is not something we just 
are done with early on in school or perhaps college, but it's lifelong learning, a growth in wisdom and grace. The Sabbath, fantasy or reality. He talks about the reality of connecting the Sabbath and that rest and that renewal to every other area of life. Then chapter 10, the creator to believe and to worship and culminating in chapter 11, connecting to Jesus, who is the cherisher, the breaker, the reconnector of the Sabbath. So it's an unusual book, quite quirky, um, and it's written in a very conversational tone. But I have to say I really warm to the man and I warm to the book. And it's not a long, heavy, demanding read. It, it really is worth a, a purchase and or a read. Um, I'll just say a few more things, and, and this is actually taken from the footnotes. Uh, uh, he dwells upon the fact that when he was in South Africa, he had many challenges as to how he should respond in pastoral and, and even prophetic situations where it wasn't enough just to stay neutral. And he says um, he came up f with a rather, what he calls a somewhat simplistic formula and he says this, that it is better to break the rules at times for the sake of love than to insist on keeping the rules in order to avoid the claims of love. Now, that's quite a controversial subject. And the way he's put it, I'm sure you'll think and push back. Well, you know, if we all break rules, then, you know, we're in a real mess. That's not really the point he's making. Uh, that's to take his text out of context. And there's always an exception anyway. But uh, as, as a rough rule of thumb, is that not closer to what Jesus did vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Pharisees and the scribes? Uh, did Jesus lean and weigh towards love, even if that was in certain tension with rules and, 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 and laws from the past? Um, as I say, that's a big debating point, but I, I like the crisp way in which he's, he's put that. A second thing he says, which is quite thought-provoking, again, this is from the, the footnotes uh, at the, or the end notes. He says that the, the Apostles' Creed has got a misrepresentation of the gospel because it says about the fact that Jesus rose again after death. Jesus didn't rise again. Jesus rose, or better still, was raised by the power of God and the giving of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Spirit. It wasn't an again there was the same Jesus, but he was different. There's a continuity with his earthly life, the past, but he's now entered into something strange uh, that we can't quite fully describe, uh, his eternal life. But it's not a case of rising again. The again should be deleted. And, and I fully concur with what he says. The, the again gives the indication of a kind of resuscitation or, or something that doesn't have that sense of mystery that you cannot explain away. And he says the English language resurrection, the word re always means something a second time or again. Uh, whereas the original Greek anastasis means to stand up or to stand forth. And that's what Jesus does um, after, after his death and burial. He is raised by God and by God's spirit. But that's not raising again, that's being raised. In fact, that flows into the ascension where Jesus is raised to the heights of heaven to be with the Father and the Son in the glory of eternity and of heaven. Uh, again, um, something that it's close to impossible to, pro to properly describe. And, and one final little thing that I found very interesting was, and, and this is connected with the, the resurrection point that he makes, he talks about sign language and he says that when people in sign language, uh, for people who are 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 deaf and, and, and who struggle to, to 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 hear and to speak, he says that when they, in the English language, British sign language, they were trying to settle on a sign for Christ. They debated what it should be, and they finally settled on putting out your palm, and then putting your 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 middle finger in the middle to depict the fact that Jesus was crucified and the nails were driven into his hands. So that's Christ. And his crucifixion. That's the main sign. That's how we symbolize Christ in sign language. And connecting to the resurrection or anastasis point that he makes earlier, he talks about the fact that similarly when they were trying to find a sign in British Sign Language, signing, how you make a sign for Jesus and his resurrection being raised, 
The sign is this, you put out the palm of your hand and you put your two fingers from the other hand on it. And this denotes the fact that this is the legs of someone who is standing, standing up and standing forth. So resurrection is taken from the Latin, which speaks about uh, rising again, you know, a second time. But that slightly gets things wrong. It's better to talk about Anastasis. Jesus stands and stands forth and stands erect as the human being who has been called from death to a new form of existence. The same Jesus, but now the risen Christ. So I, I know I've only glossed the, the book tonight and, and I'll keep my comments uh, as concise as I can, given the ear infection and, and, and other pressures that, that are upon me at present. But to reiterate, Seven Days to Freedom, uh, it's by John Dudley Davies um, and it's by DLT. It came out this year and a quirky but a very instructive and a very refreshing read. So thanks for tuning in. Next week we'll look at another book and, uh, and I kind of visit the, the pattern of one book on faith, church, structures, theology um, and then uh, the, the other week probably a different genre, a different type of literature, a different type of book. So this week we've looked at another theology or faith book. Um, next week I will probably likely um, bring forth and review um, a book from a, a different type of literature. So thanks for tuning in. Keep well and we will meet again next week for another episode of Bookmark. Thanks and God bless.